Okay, I think everyone knows me, but just in case, I'm Jean-Frédéric Clay, and I'm going uh, to speak uh, on Tomcat, and uh, I'm going to kind of uh, uh, draw um, a path from uh, the cluster to the cloud. So, uh, a short agenda. I'm, I think everyone knows who I am, but I will just do something on the topic. Uh, um, I will uh, uh, briefly show uh, how you uh, set up a cluster in Tomcat, which uh, I think you already did, but uh, I'll run a small demo. And uh, then I will uh, uh, try to explain uh, uh, what I plan to get the stuff working uh, uh, on the cloud, uh, show why it doesn't uh, work from scratch, what are the problems, uh, and uh, go a little to uh, where I am. Um, and uh, uh, try to get some uh, uh, question and discussion to know how to go forward because uh, actually uh, the code is done by some students uh, of the university at some point need to know get the feedback of the community if the community is interested in order to make it so that it can go in Tomcat or just uh, leave it as uh, one nice github stuff uh, done by some students uh, so uh, I'm working for Red Hat uh, I'm a committer since a very long time. Uh, I'm a runner. I'm organizing the morning run uh, event uh, uh, at the conference. So uh, I hope next year a lot of you will uh, be joining this nice event. We get more than 10 people. Uh, so that's a good uh, audience uh, for a run. Uh, I speak Spanish and Catalan because I've been living in Spain for uh, some years. And now I'm in the Châtel, Switzerland. So, uh, what is a cluster? Well, basically a cluster is um, a bunch of Tomcats. Uh, we exchange uh, uh, some uh, session information uh, through an intranet, and uh, they are protected from uh, the internet via a router or a proxy, a clever router or usually a proxy. Why we do this kind of thing is order to have, a, if one of the box will die, the session are replicated, so, uh, uh, we will keep, uh, for example, the shopping chart of the customer and things like that. So how you rep replicate a session? Uh, you need to tell that uh, your application is distributable uh, um, in the uh, uh, server.xml. Uh, you need to uh, uncomment the class. You need to, uh, port to open one uh, UDP port and some uh, uh, TCP port range. So quite easy. Uh, it is the uh, small demo I have. Uh, oh, I have uh, two raspberries with different nice flashing colors, which should be the IP address. And uh, I have a, a kind of a po captive portal, so you can even connect to it and go to the uh, cluster demo and play with it. It should be ping. Uh, it should be working. It should you should be able to guess the number, and it should be. Uh, as the uh, proxy is uh, doesn't have a sticky session, uh, normally each time you make a request, it's moved to the other node, but should keep the right information if the demo is working. Uh, I'm going to try to do it. You know, in some cases it works, in some, no. So, uh, I must have it somewhere ready. Uh, can I from where I can't go to the other screen, why? Stuff does not let me out. No, I can go, yeah. Ooh, so. Uh, mm? <laughs> That's not what I expected. Someone had time to hack my uh, demo? <coughs> <coughs> And uh, it's a wrong network, don't worry. Could be possible, it's uh, open, so. So I'm going to try to, uh, it should be working, because now I have it. Yeah, Fedora is a kind of uh, tricky with uh, uh, with that thing. Some t um, oh, where is my mouse? Yeah, I'm not good in seeing it, so I'm trying again. 
it says I'm connected, so too many people connected at the same time? Come on. Okay? It's even more broken than expected. I have it on the other screen, so I probably can move the other screen to here. Uh, no. For some reason, it does not want. Ah! Why? Okay. So. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> It's very difficult to make a demo when you don't see what you're doing. Why does it go <coughs> again full screen? Okay. No. Ah. <laughs> I need to. Uh, I need yeah, I need to not to be clicking outside. Uh, okay. Now I can click to the different demo. So these are the different demo I've been doing uh, with uh, the raspberries, uh, and I'm only going to use this one. So uh, it's a number guest session. Uh, it's the get session ID. Uh, normally, I try to guess a number, and I'm sending it, and it says that it uh, the the green have received the the guess, so it says to try lower. I get the session ID stay the same. Right, Twenty five. I've made two guesses, and I'm now on blue. So the cluster is working. <laughs> <laughs> So now I'm going to try something a lot more difficult, which is probably not going to work. <laughs> so I'm going back to the uh, slideshow, and uh, nope, uh, I don't know which how Fedora is choosing the starting. So that was the demo, and now we're going to try a, a, a bit more difficult demo. Um, uh, I, so it's, it <coughs> should be all prepared. Um, I'm going to build a, a, s a mini cloud uh, uh, with a three uh, Raspberry Pi. I don't count the one which is the captive portal, so I'll, uh, I, have, uh, I have green, uh, blue, and I have black, which uh, contains uh, part of the software, just the Raspberry nothing Nothing really fancy. I need to plug it and I need to unplug those and change the software. See, changing software on a Raspberry Pi is quite easy. <laughs> disk is a very small disk. Uh, I manage it. Ah. Maybe I get. I need to do the same on the other one. If someone volunteered to help me, that would be very nice. And. Don't lose the memories because I might need them for the next memory. So it's just changing the uh, the card. Thank you. Do you need to know which one's which? Uh, I figured that at home. Don't worry. <laughs> Actually, it's half configurable, so it should work. Uh, the demo, the green should be green again, and uh, and things like that. So they're going. They should form a cloud uh, <coughs> with OpenShift running on it. Oh. Uh, should. Uh, yeah, if it falls on the floor, it's not going to work. <laughs> so that's the minimum you can do. And trust me, it's, it's a lot of work uh, <laughs> because uh, basically there's a lot of things still missing uh, in this area. It's first, uh, the OS is a 32 uh, bit OS, the one I'm running, and OpenShift expects. OpenShift Docker, all those things expect a 64-bit operating system. Additionally, uh, <coughs> OpenShift uh, uh, use a modified version of Docker, which use uh, 
not real modification of the kernel, but you need to compile your kernel with some special flag. So I, I had some fun. So I'm going to go to the... So um, OpenShift uh, is a Red Hat project uh, which basically uh, is using, it's using Docker and Kubernetes to do the uh, um, orchestration. Uh, if you want to know more, you can uh, click on the openshift.com. You can also get uh, some uh, free access to it. It's limited uh, in time, I think, uh, to three months or something like that. You can play with it and learn. That's quite interesting. So, so as long as you all the show, I have three slides in all years. Yeah. Well, I don't think I can uh, start a lot more here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so as you can see, there's a kind of... Uh, uh, there's a lot of things I had to crunch, crash, and put uh, in the in the Raspberry to be able to get at least the OpenShift starting. So I'm going to jump to uh, some explanation about uh, wh what we are trying to do. At what uh, I'm not alone. I have uh, some students which are doing the things. Uh, so I'd like to jump and thank the University of Neuchâtel for giving me two students. Uh, so that they can play with this thing. They are only working one day per week on the, on the topic, but it's the uh, research work, so it's going to be finished in end of June. So this is why it might not, it's not yet finished. I, I, I can't go too forward because, of course, they, <laughs> they want to show uh, the things themselves to the, to the <coughs> professor uh, before me. So at some point they submit, they said to me, well, we've not done what you expect in order that you don't can get what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And if it's recorded, it's even worse because she will say, what the hell, you've done nothing. <laughs> 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 so basically, um, we're going to, uh, uh, so this is uh, not exactly uh, what we are. So we have, we have uh, one node, master, that's the, the, the black raspberry. Uh, which uh, is taking care of the of the of the routing layer, uh, basically taking care of uh, starting the HA proxy of on, of on each of those boxes and making sure that uh, the scheduler is in place, that the uh, it controls the management and the replication. Because basically in OpenShift, you you start one instance of uh, your Tomcat and then you just go on the screen click uh, one more and then it gives you one more and I can click three times and after the demo is over the, when the Raspberry is crashing but that's another thing. <laughs> uh, OpenShift can be run on a on physical virtual box in this case uh, it's, uh, it's a release on uh, physical boxes and uh, it's a private cloud. So the, the s w once the thing would be finished this could be run on uh, any uh, on any OpenShift cluster and probably uh, as it uses Kubernetes, uh, as soon as the underlying uh, cloud is using Docker, uh, it will work. So that probably uh, in June when it's going to be finished completely, uh, anyone could use the, the things and, and it will work. So uh, how you develop uh, an application with OpenShift? Uh, well, uh, you do it on your laptop. Uh, th this is, this is uh, basically uh, what I'm going to, uh, to try to show. Uh, I will just, uh, I'm, my application is already uh, um, uh, compiled. I will just uh, uh, send it uh, to um, to the master and the master will start uh, one uh, replica on uh, one of the two nodes. Uh, no LED will be blinking because uh, it, I can't put everything on the, on the poor thingy. So if you want to try it uh, right now, uh, the, the demo from the, the student is already uh, working correctly on Minishift, but I trust them only to some extent because everything is uh, in on MIDI shift. It's a mini open shift which run on a single box. So uh, I don't know how the Docker, um, the different Docker instances are correctly protected and how, how it's uh, something realistic. They tell me it's perfectly, but yeah, yeah, 
on the laptop. So it's the, the, the next step is to move it on, on, the, on the cloud. So uh, I want that uh, if someone decides to move a Tomcat to the cloud, that it's something easy. Like oh, you just have to uh, prepare your, um, basically you will, there will be an image prepared with Java and you just, or even with Tomcat, and then we can have this ready and then uh, just uh, uh, you use the uh, OpenShift uh, management console and then click on it and then uh, on the other side uh, you um, you use Fabricate. Fabricate is a tool to uh, deploy these things. Uh, basically it's going to uh, build your shard and then uh, tell uh, OpenShift to build the image and start the image. Um, uh, in, in, in my case uh, I've used the uh, to, in, to install OpenShift on um, your own uh, uh, hardware, it's, it's quite easy. Uh, Ansible is doing uh, that for you. It has a script, so you just run the script. Trust me, on the Raspberry, it takes the whole night. <laughs> and you need a good internet connection because it's going every time it's something goes wrong, uh, you need to go back and then reinstall everything. So the there's a special dedicated script for the Raspberry, which need to be pushed uh, somewhere in the, uh, in the on GitHub, which is not yet finished, so it's going to be pushed too. So, uh, <coughs> uh, if you get the boxes, I think in, if you get the boxes now, uh, you should be able to make the demo without any problem in June. So I'm just a bit too ahead. Uh, so uh, the idea is just to run a small uh, web app uh, with session, and in this case, uh, I've just have a simple counter. So you just uh, click on the page, reload, reload, and it should make a plus one, plus one. You start on another browser to get another uh, uh, to get a connection to another uh, node. You uh, make plus plus. It should increment. Uh, I use the management uh, uh, API of OpenShift to. Uh, uh, remove the node where one of the node, I don't know which one, then I click next and it, uh, it should still work on the two. That's the idea of the demo and that basically would tell that you can have your application uh, written as it is now. Uh, y you just need, uh, you will just have to configure something probably uh, in uh, web.xml and then you have uh, your Tomcat that uh, run uh, clustered but in the cloud. Have you tried unplugging them or one of the devices? Well, if you unplug one of the devices, you are destroying the cloud, so the result might be a bit picky. It's, it's not it supposed... It should work, right? Yes, but... <laughs> 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 it would be, uh, you know... Yeah, yeah, well... Cool. Yes, the, but <coughs> I, I'll, I hope uh, we make another Tomcat cone and I hope I will have uh, the opportunity <coughs> next year to show you that I unplug it, I don't care what yeah. happened. Like, I would not unplug it because I'm sure it will go very, very wrong. It, it might not work, so if, <laughs> if, I, if I take too much, if I make too much try, it's not going to work. So, uh, the, the, this is one slide about the session replication uh, cluster. I wouldn't, I was thinking cloud, but uh, I wrote cluster, sorry. So basically, uh, the HA proxy uh, is using uh, HTTP uh, 1.1. I have not checked how you can configure it to use H2, but of course it's a proxy, so it's going to make load balancing between the different uh, nodes. And if I would imagine that if you ask HA proxy to demultiplex the H2 connection, it will probably be the node. There is uh, no HTTP uh, supporting HA proxy yet. Yet. I know. So we will. Well, we can maybe change the. Uh, if uh, it's just that uh, OpenShift use a HA uh, uh, proxy, but uh, it's just a, a configured image. Uh, and it's a Docker image you start. If you would replace it by HTTPD, it would work. Which is something I. I could try for the net conference, but that would belong to the HTTPD track. Okay, so uh, uh, the application is going uh, to have uh, cookies to carry the session ID and the information of uh, the session is uh, stored uh, in the cloud, basically stored in the memory. Uh, 
<laughs> so uh, HA proxy um, uh, make a kind of uh, uh, stickiness. Uh, basically, when you click and you have a session ID, you're going to be always coming to the same uh, node uh, of the cloud. So basically, if you want to demonstrate that uh, the cluster is working, you need to stop the node. So uh, this is uh, this is one of the figures I was trying to do, but I had to give up because that's a definitely uh, the, if it's a cluster, that's okay. Uh, but trying to do that uh, in the cloud is a kind of a challenge because uh, I was it's it's. it's it's not a challenge, it's easy, but it's a lot, it's used a lot of time because it's uh, kind of a sysadmin work. So, uh, you know, it's, it's very easy, you, you miss one step uh, and it's not working. Uh, I don't know if there's much to do uh, to explain there. So, basically, uh, you can start, you're going to have uh, the node, it says rel, but it's Fedora. I have stolen those slides from. Uh, uh, well, I've, I've stolen the picture from an uh, uh, OpenShift presentation of a colleague. Uh, the slide on the top is has been made by my students. Uh, and so um, uh, the idea is like we start the stuff and we're going to start uh, three Tomcats uh, on the cloud. So they could be the two on the, uh, on the same node and one on the other node. Uh, in my picture, I have one extra node which uh, I have forgot at home. Things like that happen. <laughs> so I was uh, planning uh, more nodes, but uh, I forgot it. So okay, so that's, that's the next slide. So I'm going to try to connect to the. Uh, I'm going to stay on this one. So I'm going to try to connect to uh, the OpenShift console, which is supposedly running. I need to find the mouse. I think. It's very. No, I need, it does not want to leave the presentation. In fact, someone have to explain me why the mouse does not. Okay, thank you. So um, I think I have already the page. No, this is the backup uh, in case it get broken. Uh, this is the page of my student. Uh, this is the instance running in the office. I'm not connected to it, so I can't connect to it. So, uh, so the only thing you have to know is the address of master. In this case, it's named black. So I it should find it. Yeah. Ah, that uh, does not work. I can try to to enter the IP address. It, it might be that. Might be that the box is not started. To see if it's needed. Ah, it's all blinking. It's not good, but something weird. Um, I can try to uh, fix it. First, is it up? So what happened to black? You can connect to it. Yes. Why does not want to show anything? I have the shell script to repair some of the problem that could happen. Uh, can't remember where it's located. So the first thing is like that might be something wrong with the IP table. I'm looking for the right IP table command which I have prepared. Give me a minute, sorry. <coughs> uh, is it running already? Okay, it's the IP table problem. Some oh I have uh, too much with the IP table. Uh. Okay, I don't find it. I have it in the file. Uh, oh no, I don't want to stop this one. Sorry, I'll move to the 
if if I don't get it, I'll I'll, I'll uh, I will promise I will record it uh, in my office with the things and it will work. But uh, I had it somewhere. Uh, no, that's what I want to show. Okay, it's here. Why the EP table have gone? I have a bunch of EP table to set. For some reason they are not done. So uh, where is the good string? Just a minute. I'll give up if it does not, if I don't find what's wrong. I need to find the right one. Oh, we need zero. No, that's not, that would be bad. Okay, let's try again. Now that the, I have opened the port. Uh, does it try again? Ah! What does it say? It still will check the connection. And it should okay, so I'll move to the backup demo. I have no idea what's wrong. That's a bit weird. That worked in the room. I tried it just before coming. Shit. So, okay. Uh, I need a minute to connect. Disconnect from this network. Connect to the other one. Okay. Wait a minute. I'm going to to connect to a, a bigger cloud. My office one. Uh, except if the cleaning lady have make a disaster, it's good. Trust me, that could happen. That happened to me in one uh, demo that I discovered my node was gone and then discovered that uh, it's just like uh, someone decided that they unplugged the cable because they need to clean. See, it's not an official lab, it's some old boxes a friend was giving to me, so it's kind of like a two. Da, da, da. Nope. I don't know what I've entered, but definitely. Not a password. So I need a minute. Okay, I'm in the Red Hat network. And I'll just need to go uh, not to this one. Uh, uh, no, where is it? Ah, I can use this one again. It's not logged on. So, okay. So, uh, this is what you have, uh, you should have seen uh, <coughs> on on the things. Oh, well. Uh, this is a previous version of the demo, which is a lot broken. Uh, uh, this is a uh, this is this would be a lie because this is a uh, EEP uh, running and uh, it's, it's there's a small uh, um, uh, web application there so I can this works but this is not what we do. so uh, the student have changed the name of the demo because they decided that Tomcat in the cloud was not a very funny name so they they named it Fabricate they use Fabricate they, I told them that's not a very good name for the thing but well I didn't want to mess up too much with their code. So, I think uh, I'm still logged on. Yes. So basically, how it works in OpenShift, we we go here to the console, go to command tool, and you have here you get a token. That's a password. Uh, you can't connect to it because it's in the VPN, so there's no risk, and then it's not valid for a long time. So now I go to the uh, 
I where's the mouse? Why the mouse does not want to move from one place to the other? Shit. Uh, I should do less demos. So okay, I'm going to push this, and I need to copy past. Ah! I need to do so to get someone else doing it for me at some point probably. Where's the mouse? I think the size is making it that yeah. it okay. So I want to copy this line. Okay. If I manage uh, to the uh, here. So of course on the Raspberry it would have been exactly the same. Uh, I need to clean the application because I didn't do that last time. Uh, then I, I hope I remember. I still have the comment somewhere. So uh, we're going to, to tell Fabricate. Uh, to uh, basically, Maven is going to uh, build a jar uh, with the with the application. It's going to take the class that I needed uh, to get the Tomcat running. It's going to send all that stuff uh, to uh, the OpenShift, and OpenShift is going to build the application and the image for us and deploy it on the different nodes. So I hope that this is working. So it's compiling. That's a pity because it's quite nice when you run it on the on the Raspberry. So it's going to send this uh, that maybe not that lucky because it's going to send this in the other side of the world. <laughs> So I, I think you see the idea. Uh, if we want to get Tomcat uh, running and uh, have a, uh, a session replication easy to handle, uh, we need to do some stuff. So uh, this is the first intent to do something. Uh, uh, using Fabricate is, uh, is quite easy because it's going to do everything for us. And uh, it should be not to it should not take too long because normally uh, the the things are uh, mostly uh, already in my cloud, so it is is just redeploying the small parts that have changed. Nothing have changed, but you can't know it. <laughs> so it should be started. So if I go back. Uh, so if I go here, I I have uh, two pods, and uh, I have I think I need to wait until they are I need to check <coughs> they looked okay. So uh, this is the uh, HTTP port of the Tomcat, the classical one. We have an additional port for uh, uh, to send the information uh, between between the node uh, uh, for the QB ping uh, protocol, uh, and uh, the different uh, uh, instances of Tomcat are going to uh, use this port to communicate the uh, session information. So uh, let's say if it works. So here I have another problem: is that from time to time. What I'm deploying is using an EPv6 address, and my router between the node is ignoring things due to some filters, and I don't have access uh, to it. You, you need to be in the room to change it, so I hope it will work. So basically, uh, that's not what I want to s show. Uh, go here. So. This is the application, so basically it's a sample counter. Uh, uh, HAProxy is going to make it uh, sticky, you can see. So this is the an, one internal uh, IP address. If I use another, like Chrome, uh, which I need to push to the other screen, which I'm going to be fighting with the mouse. If someone have an idea how I can move something to the other, Part of the screen that would be good. Okay. Uh, 
Yeah, well, I don't want to crush my. Yeah, I need. No, I need to. So uh, hopefully it's now in another. Is in on the other node? No, it's on the same. So, uh, ah, that's not working the way I expect. Ah, uh, oh, I'm very unlucky. So. Um, no, I didn't want to close. I want to go here. Yeah. No, not this one, but anyway, I'm going to, ref that's the wrong ID, so. Uh, I've closed it, no? Yeah. yeah, so I need to reopen it. It was this one. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to start another one and hope that we touch the other one. I mean, if you so we go to application, you go to pod. Uh, uh, no, uh, you go to overview, sorry. Um, I'm not logged on correctly. So what? Yeah. Come on. I just want to start another instance, and for some reason, it does not display them. Ah, I'll find it. To replica, I sh <coughs> don't buy an. Oh dear, I can create another one. Why it gone? Ah, I have some small. Uh, no. Okay, again. I should be a screen with the number of nodes which I. Put the arrow right next to the link. See the arrow that's pointing. What? Or click the top. So move the mouse up some. Down. Down. Okay, right there. Right there, not the link. Next to the link. It's a drop down. I don't see it. Yeah. Just click it. Yeah. Okay. Up just a little bit. Right there. Click it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I can't see it from where I am, so that's yeah. the issue. So uh, let's scale to three. So it's just it's just starting another instance of Tomcat, uh, which should have the same uh, session information. Let's take a while. It's done. I need to go back to. Uh, so the nah, I need to go back to this one. I need to close it and start it again because. I don't think he's going to connect to another one. Uh, let's try. That could be more easy. Uh, it's still the same, no? Yeah. Okay, so I need to close. Okay, sorry for the fight. So I need to. Uh, why I can't. Why the mouse is doing some weird thingy? Okay, I'm at the right place. Activity. Uh, the thing is like, uh, I should have started more then. So I'm going to start Chrome again and hope it goes to another one. It's lucky, I have see half of it, so it's not too bad. I think my mouse is broken. And of course, I need to copy past uh, this. No, you should remember now. Uh, uh, I think I've lost it. I really lost everything. I don't want to see my. You don't want to see my history. No, I need to copy past it again. Uh, don't worry. This was the right one now. Because yeah. I have a kind of multiply it. Uh, not willing. Uh, so let's try. Oh. <laughs> okay, uh, I gave up. <laughs> so if you have enough <laughs> Tomcat instance started, 
at some point, the, the second browser you open in will go <laughs> to another node and uh, if I switch this node down, it will, the counter will still work because the session information is replicated. We need to trust me because <laughs> I, will, I, stop, I, stop, I stop fighting with the demo. So I'll go back to the presentation. Uh, and I have only two minutes remaining. Is it correct? Of batteries, which is not that good. Ah, I'm sure that's. Uh, the, why the mouse does not. Okay, it's back. On the egg. Uh, Slideshow. Start from the current slide. Is it right? Okay, was it where I was? Uh, no, but I'm more or less done. Um, I, I, I know that uh, uh, Mark wants to go uh, early. Thank you. <laughs> I have two minutes of battery on the laptop, so uh, <laughs> I have to finish. <laughs> so uh, uh, the idea is like uh, we've what we try to, uh, try to achieve to, uh, with the student is that uh, uh, this work with a minimal uh, configuration in Tomcat, like just adding uh, either the, the same cluster and then it will automatically find out that it is in the cloud for some, uh, for some reason. Uh, we use existing code that was a suggestion for the student because immediately they start to write a large quantity of code without looking to anything. Uh, I have not committed anything in Tomcat. Uh, there's, of course, no doc documentation as uh, any test. Uh, if you want to try it, uh, the, the things are more or less available in the internet. You can play with it. You need to uh, have Ansible uh, installed on your laptop in order to be able to install it in an uh, easy way, because uh, uh, don't try it by hand. It's, uh, it's going to fail. It's even worse than my demo. <laughs> So you can have a look to OpenShift. Uh, I, that's the only cloud I know enough to be able to make a presentation. So uh, that's why I've used OpenShift. Uh, any cloud that is using Docker and Kubernetes uh, will work the same way. Because uh, uh, basically, uh, we just repackage the thing, put a nice name on it, and uh, have a different graphical interface. Questions? Yep. I have a very ignorant question for you. You're using Docker, so presumably you can do all of these deployments already. What is OpenShift buying you, and what is Kubernetes buying you? Um, and you're already using Ansible, so you're, you're, e you're there's, it seems like there's multiple levels of orchestration, and I don't know why you need all of them. You mean you want to orchestrate Docker directly? Sure. I never tried that, so. Yeah. Well, the advantage of Kubernetes is that it's made to, <coughs> orchest to or orchestrate the stuff. So uh, I think that's, that's why I'm using Docker. I want to be able to, uh, you, you can have a lot of control. Uh, OpenShift is going to, uh, yeah, Kubernetes is going to give you the possibility to have an health check of your application. It can decide to stop a node and restart it if it's broken. Uh, it can scale up or down, because the, the good idea is like basically, uh, if, if you are a customer and those are not on a Raspberry Pi, but somewhere in the cloud you pay per pod which is running or something like that, so it's, it could, if you don't want uh, that it turn on a very expensive uh, stuff or a very expensive demo, uh, you need to make sure that when the application is as a very low, there's only uh, one pod started for the application. Uh, that's why I would use Kubernetes to control Docker. Okay. So now, uh, um, there's no more question. I just have a quick, uh, a quick question. Is like, um, are you interested uh, that I push this forward and put it in uh, Tomcat when the student will be done, 
or um, there's no big interest of having uh, a cloud solution uh, easy to use. There's also solution like uh, you can write your own uh, session, you, you can uh, write your own session manager and then send it to a database or something like that. But this is not what uh, I was exploring. So how, how is the session replication actually? Uh, actually, it's, it? actually, it's still uh, half done. Okay. So uh, the session uh, copied uh, to an infinite span cache, which is doing the Kubernetes thing. Okay. The idea is to have the Kubernetes CD uh, directly uh, providing uh, the member list to the Tomcat cluster. But this is even more broken than my demo. Mm -hmm. It's possible. Yes. So it's dependent on Kubernetes, and you're not looking to implement a dynamic inventory outside of Kubernetes? I, probably the side effect of that is that we're going to have a, a dynamic uh, uh, list of members for the whole cluster because basically you need to be changing it. And there's, there's, there's other platforms that, like AWS that does not support UDP. You know, UDP multiple. Yeah, yeah, that's why we that's why we open an, an, an extra port and that's why we use uh, uh, we use some administrative tool from uh, Kubernetes in order to get the list of the pod that are uh, belonging to this application. That way we have the list of the member of our cluster, and uh, they are all uh, on the port which is exposed through the cluster, so we just need to send the member information in front. So all the pieces are in place, and uh, <coughs> I hope we are able to go forward. Well, we're going to go forward, so especially if the community is interested. Uh, right. So from that perspective, you could use that outside of Kubernetes, use that extra port, yeah. and use it to do the session yes, replication. Classes and then over TCP, yeah. just do it over stream or yeah. TCP, not you. Exactly. Yeah. That would be really useful for my use case. Okay, so I'll go forward. Anyone has? I'm not the only one that uses AWS and you know does not have Docker containers. So okay. if you're using standard, say EC2 instances, mm -hmm. essentially Linux okay. VM. So we have to figure out how you find the mm -hmm. nodes. Yes. But that will be an administrative comment because they are the console that chose uh, the instance of your application. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in Kubernetes, we know, I know it better, so I, I can tell the, the, tell the student you need to use that. Uh, and I don't know how it works in data, but I can tell them you have to use that. And then it should be I guess you could use stuff like multicast too. Right? No. No, no, no. We have to be very careful in the, in the cloud uh, because, uh, uh, as I was saying, it's like you have multiple instances of the same uh, application running uh, on, on one big box. So if it's using four, which is the case of most of the clouds, then you are limited of the, with the number of uh, ports you can use. Mm -hmm. That's the that's where the problem is. So you don't have multicast, and then you. You are limited to very few ports. And many of the cloud providers don't support UDP. You don't support UDP multicast, and you are very limited to the number. That goes away. Uh, of course. That is weird because uh, it's probably going to change at some point. But uh, I'm, I'm using CloudStack, and there's uh, yeah, that works as it has multicasting for, uh, for uh, managing a Hazelcast process. Mm -hmm. yeah. You sure they're not using something like uh, Kubernetes? <laughs> well, yes, because I've done it myself. So, uh, okay. Uh,